Hey guys, welcome back to Tabletop Glory. My name is Graham Johnson, and today we're going to be taking a look at some T45 power armor from the Fallout board game. Now you can also use this miniature for Fallout Wasteland Warrior, and of course this tutorial can be applied to any miniature that happens to be completely coated in armor. Let's take a look at what we did. Hey guys, welcome back to Tabletop Glory. Now before we get started, I want to give a big thank you to, well, every single one of you. Thank you guys so much for being here. Uh, earlier this week we hit the 1000 subscriber mark, which is a huge milestone forward when it comes to YouTube and ultimately monetization. And although YouTube isn't about the money, at the end of the day if I could do this for a full time job, that would be spectacular. And although right now I'm kind of balancing trying to get my business back open and doing this as a full time job, I would love to be able to just focus on this and pay someone to uh, run the hobby store for me and continue to make content for you guys. I think that would be really awesome. Uh, regardless of what the future may hold, thank you guys so much for that wonderful milestone. As of today of recording this video, we're at 1,200 subscribers and climbing. And uh, we are at roughly about uh, 500, 600 watch hours. You need about 4,000 watch hours, which I know sounds like a lot of time to uh, have consumed here on YouTube. Uh, but that is across everyone who watches the channel, not just people who are subscribed. So if you're watching this video and you don't really intend to subscribe, thank you for being here anyway. I really do appreciate it. You are helping me to be able to do this as a full-time job and I am very grateful. Now in any case, let's move on with today's video. So as you guys can see in the video, we are using a model from the Fallout board game. Now you can use this with Wasteland Warriors. There's uh, some T45 units in the Brotherhood of Steel and if you wanted to give them this Gatlin laser just for a bit of variety you totally could. Although I don't believe there are rules for the Gatlin laser quite yet and if they are they are only for spe specific units like special units. In any case I really love this miniature. I thought it'd be a lot of fun to paint. Uh, but mostly what this is stemming from is our Accurail video from the other week. Now, I took a rail car from my miniature railroad and I weathered it up using oil paints. And I learned a lot from that. And I said I would make a tutorial proper in the future about weathering, well, weathering metal. And although this is kind of a first step in that direction, uh, today's video is actually going to be using nothing but acrylic paints, as I do recognize that not everyone has oil paints and not everyone is ready to take the plunge into oil painting just quite yet. So today we're going to be talking about how to use our oil paints to replicate similar effects to what I got on that rail car, but on our T45 power armor. Now we're not going to be going super heavily weathered like I did with the rail car. We're going to keep things mildly weathered with a little bit of rust here and there, uh, but we'll talk about what I'm using, meaning color wise, and why I'm using it when we get to it. Now just to cover what I've done on screen already, I'm using Vallejo Metal Color. This is an alcohol based airbrush ink, or not ink, but paint. And I am using uh, the Gun Metal Color as our base coat. And I just put that all over, got a nice even coat. I ended up putting about three thin coats of that on. And now I'm, I'm spraying from directly above from about a 20 degree angle up. And that is giving me a Xenophil highlight. And I'm using that metal color yet again, but this time I'm using metal color silver and the silver is actually quite vibrant and bright and when you see the miniature up close that nice dark gun metal and all the shadows really helps to sell the shape of the armor. Now here's a nice easy step and one that you don't often see me doing. We're just going to hit the entire thing with a black wash. Now if you don't have Nuln Oil, which is the product I'm using, you can just take some airbrush thinner or some water and mix it with some black acrylic paint. And what you're trying to go for is just a nice all over wash. We're trying to deepen those recesses. We're letting it pool just a teeny tiny bit in all the cracks and crevices. We don't want a coffee staining effect. We just want it to kind of look like grease and grime has settled in all those recesses. And we're going to be adding and playing off of that along with our rusting effects later on when we go ahead and add Agrax Earthshade, which is a brown tone, as well as some Seraphim 
some sepia and some uh, fugan orange which is a yellow and orange tone now we will be doing those selectively we won't be putting them all over like we're doing with this one uh, but for now you can just go ahead and gunk that all over and just get it all over everything now we're going to be using Doom Bull Brown as our base tone for a lot of our rust and the reasoning for this is it's a nice brick brown, it's got a bit of red in it, it's got some really nice earthy natural tones and all of that's going to kind of come together to create this really nice base for our rust as well as just like a super aged metal look. And so we're going to go ahead and we're going to put that all over everywhere where there is heavy rust on the weapon and we're going to put that on the pipes that lead into the helmet as well. And if there's anywhere that you really, really want to have a heavy rust, you may want to go ahead and water it down just a little bit and make it almost a wash and kind of pinstripe it into the cracks and crevices where you want your extreme rust to be. But mostly for my cases, I'm gonna be focusing this around on the gun. Now, how did I know which support struts and what parts of the gun needed to be this color of brown? Well, it's pretty simple. I just went ahead and looked up a reference image online. I pulled up images from concept art as well as I pulled up images from inside of various Bethesda games. Both Fallout 4 and Fallout 76 have this weapon. And I basically just looked at the two differences, made sure that I was using the most common colors between the two so that it would be recognizable no matter what games people play and that's how I'm choosing my colors and that's where I'm choosing where the colors actually go. So we're gonna go ahead and get this on all of these support struts and everything else and we'll cut back when we're ready to move to the next color. So next I'm taking Lorn Forest. Now this is basically just like a faded olive drab green uh, and we're going to be applying that to what is essentially the main cylinders. When you look at like the charge rifle and the laser rifle in Fallout, it's that big green bar that makes up the bulk of the gun. Uh, this gun just happens to have four of them. Uh, now I'm painting the one that is on the bottom, which is in between the struts as well. Now if you got shaky hands or whatever, I don't think anyone's going to fault you if you don't paint that fourth one that's underneath everything. So don't worry about it, but if you want to paint it, don't feel bad if you got to go back in and fix up that, that Doombull brown rust color. I, you know, nobody's gonna really judge you if you've got shaky hands or if you're just like me and you got fat fingers and make mistakes. That's okay too. And speaking of fat fingers making mistakes, now's a really great time to hide some of those mistakes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back in with a little bit of red and a little bit of orange and we're gonna kind of water these down almost to a wash. We're not quite to a, a wash and we're not quite a glaze we're somewhere in between those two. And we're going to stipple that onto all of our places that have rust. Now you may need to do this two or three times. You may want to mix your red and your orange. You might want to just have some fun and experiment. Maybe you might want to add a little bit of yellow to your orange to get some really bright vibrancy. And just kind of stipple this all over. Mostly stipple it in areas where water might collect if this was just sitting out in the open or where water might run off the weapon. So focusing a lot near the bottom, you might want to put more oranges down there or on the underside of some of the pipe work. That's where you kind of want to focus some of your brighter colors, whereas your darker colors are going to be on top uh, where it's not going to be as wet as often or as frequently. Now I noticed in my reference material, all of the wiring that is on these Gatlin lasers appear to be yellow. I don't know if there's a reason in the lore for them to be yellow, but there appears to be a yellow uh, cable that runs up both sides of the site, as well as one that runs up the bottom. So I went ahead and painted by hand the ones on the side of the site, as well as then painted the one that is sculpted on the bottom. And now as for the front of the weapon, I just simply wrap the yellow around the front to make it look as though the wire wraps its way around the front of the weapon. Now soft spots or soft points on the armor, there really aren't that many of them on power armor. But on the T45, there's these joints in the elbows and around the knees and of course in the gut region and a little bit on the side near the ribs. Uh, I went ahead and painted these Rackarth flesh now, if you don't have that color, it's basically like a, a, think of a dirty linen kind of color. You know, it's a bit fleshy, so it's a little bit pink. 
um, but it's kind of this off-white color. And I thought that when I went ahead and added a brown wash to it to make it look dirty, it would do kind of this grimy look, like this, this old leather or this old fabric that's been in this armor for a long time. Now I decided to go with this color rather than a leather color like what we see in Fallout 4 and Fallout 76 because all of the concept art has this gray color and even in the belly and rib section in Fallout 76 and Fallout 4 it's still that grayish pink color but for some reason in the elbow and the knees in Fallout 4 it appears to be a leather piece instead of a fabric piece. So it's up to you on what color you want to pick. If you want to go with the leather, I recommend something like XV88, which is a nice bright leather color, and then just kind of putting on some brown washes until it gets into the color spectrum that you like. And so now begins the weathering process. Now this does go fairly quickly because it is a rather small miniature. And because I did not model this as though the armor had ever been painted at any given time, I don't have to worry about paint chips, so I don't have to worry about going in with a brush and stippling on different colors. Although if I had wanted to, I could have put some scrapes and scratches by painting a chrome color on top of everything to look like fresh scrapes and fresh scratches and things like that. But uh, that was just a step beyond what I really wanted to do for this miniature, especially considering it's more than likely going to get used as a bad guy, and it's probably just going to get pulled off the table almost immediately afterward anyway. So I'm not really concerned about making something look extremely beautiful or spending tons of time on something that's not going to be on the table for that long. So like I said toward the beginning of the video, uh, if you want to start with your rust colors by watering down Doom Bull Brown, again that nice brick red brown, go down all the way to a wash or a glaze, and in places where it's most important like around the face and the shoulder pads and anything like that where you want the eye to be captured, go ahead and put that in all those cracks and crevices. Kind of go ahead and put a pin wash in and around those areas, and that's really going to help to focus the eye because that's where the bulk of all your colors is going to end up on the miniature. And so now I'm just taking some Agrax Earth Shade, which again is a brown wash. I'm focusing this around the fabric areas, but I'm also focusing this in any places where the water would pool as it ran down the armor, whether that be because this guy went through a lake, or it rained, or whatever. We want to make sure that a lot of that brown kind of pools in those recesses or the pockets that the water would run into as it runs down him. We're not trying to mimic water streaking as that would kind of get wiped away with the basic maintenance of the armor. However, in those cracks and crevices is where a lot of the dirt is going to stick and stay. Again, in places where I'm wanting the eye to kind of focus on, I'm going a little bit ham-fisted and I'm putting it on a little thicker in those places. But especially around the legs, I'm being more cautious about where I'm just slapping this stuff on. Now I'm breaking back out the Vallejo Metal Color Silver and the reason I'm doing this now instead of doing it before now or even doing it last is because I want it to blend in with some of the last of my weathering. And I'm not wanting it to blend in all the way to the point that it disappears, I'm kind of wanting it somewhere in between. I want this armor to feel like it's well loved, well worn, but heavily used. And as a result of that, you're going to have areas where the armor is almost polishing itself from it bumping up against itself. Places like around the wrists, around the knees, places of high movement in the hips, those are where you want to be focusing a lot of your highlights, especially any ridges on the armor where if debris or anything is catching it or the armor is bumped up against a tree or a doorway or something like that, those areas of the armor are going to be getting scraped and scratched and are going to stay polished a lot longer than anywhere else on the miniature. It was around this time in the weathering process on the Accurail rail car where I started to work with the sepium colors, which is kind of a yellow-orange color. In this case, we're going to be using Fugan Orange, but we're going to be going very mildly with it. I'm focusing more on large open flat areas and kind of pushing the color around and making it much more subtle than what it would be if it simply were to pool in the recesses as, in, as is intended but I'm pushing it around and kind of making sure that it stays flat along these surfaces as if to say that perhaps whether it be oil or rust something is starting to form but it could easily be wiped away or removed with a little bit of TLC or elbow grease. This isn't the fact that this armor is being neglected, it's just the fact that it's being worn more than it's being maintained. And I think that really speaks to something in the Fallout universe. 
And I think this is where the point of the miniature starting to tell its own story really starts to evolve. One of my last steps in weathering this miniature is a bit of a stipple slash dry brush with Ryza Rust. Now this is one of the technical paints that I would consider goopy, and a lot of people I have heard refer to Blood for the Blood God as goopy. I would consider that a bit more of a syrup, for as gross as that sounds. Ryza Rust is very easy to accidentally wipe way too much off when dry brushing, however I feel that's when it works the best. It allows you to be very, very meticulous in how slow you build up that color. Now that also having been said, when you wipe off too much it does tend to dry in the brush and you're constantly refilling your brush. So this paint in my opinion works very well for dry brushing but it also works very well for stippling which is how we're using it mostly in this setting. And I'm just kind of going back into anywhere where there's some dark browns and just kind of adding a little bit more rust and then I just kind of pock the armor. I lightly tap it in places all over the armor. I'm not trying to add huge deposits of orange rust, just little flecks of color here and there to kind of break up the silver of the armor. And you can do the same thing with a dark brown or a black to kind of mimic paint chipping if you decide to paint your power armor in any color other than silver. I think it would look absolutely wonderful. You know, typically I'd be saying, well, there you have it, and showing you the final version of the miniature. But uh, for some reason, I never really show you guys how I do my bases. Now, I have done videos in the past where I've shown decorative bases and how I go through the process of building a base and deciding what to put on the base. Um, but with a lot of miniatures, the base is either sculpted onto the miniature, like with this one, or they're pretty generic poses, again, like this one, where having a decorative base outside of like a decorative tile floor or something to that nature um, is just kind of all you can get. So uh, I wanted to show that just using a ghrelin earth is okay. I know that some people like really kind of are like, oh, a ghrelin earth, Armageddon dunes, all those other things, like people are just like, eh. But honestly, these technical paints are meant for doing stuff like this. And yes, I'm kind of like that myself when that's all that I put on the base. I'm usually not happy with a miniature if that's all I do to it. Once this stuff dries, you can put washes and dry brushes and all kinds of other crazy good textures on top of it. However, in addition to what I'm already putting down, I'm also scraping up a chunk of a, a little rusted pipe that's for like a Nurgle creature and I'm going to be adding that to the base and I'm going to cut off all the stuff that makes it identify as Warhammer so it just looks like an old lead pipe and rust it out on the base and I think it'll look great with this. But I also went and printed off some posters, some Nuka-Cola posters and I did that with an inkjet printer and then I kind of scraped up all the edges of those little posters using a razor blade and then crumpled them up and then uncrumpled them and folded them up and blah blah blah. And then when I glue them down into the base, they look really good. In the case of this miniature, I actually stamped it down into that base, into that, uh, uh, that dunes that I put down on the base. And I feel like it does a really good job of making that poster look like it's been stamped in the mud more than once. All this stuff kind of really helps to sell the scene and tell a story and put that miniature into its universe. So. Don't feel bad if you're using stuff like a Ghrelin Earth or Armageddon Dunes because they're really great products and it doesn't take all that much to really make them help sell the story of what your army is doing at the time. Whether it mean that they'd be marching through a muddy field or they're in the middle of pitched combat, these texture paints are really amazing for helping you tell your story. Well, regardless, at the end of the day, guys, here we go. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Thank you so much for an amazing milestone of 1K. I can't wait to see where we're at at 2K and beyond. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank you so much for all the love and support. Thank you to my Patreons. And thank you to everyone who just comes and watches the videos, whether you're a subscriber or not. I'm really glad that you're here. As always, if you have ideas for future videos, feel free to suggest them in the comments below, and I will give you a shout out if I decide to use one of your ideas in a future video. As always, I will see you guys in the next one. May your display case always be filled and your pile of shame 
never run empty. Bye-bye.